I'm introducing you to group improvisation games, or GIGs for short. These are our tools to study social interaction and how to change how people work. At schools, there are lots of social problems, uh, possible distractions for learning, and sometimes going to school gets to be a traumatic experience. Typically, when people are trying to fix this, they try to fix the individuals and hope that with that, they change the whole school. This is both expensive and inefficient, so we take another other route. We work at the group level. We work and teach, teach groups of students to interact better with each other and this way free their full potential. So how do we do that? First, we summon a kick-ass team of cognitive neuroscientists, dance teachers and dancers, and then step way out of our comfort zones. In our projects, us scientists had to learn how to dance, and we were teaching the dancers how to read the brain. So, the games that we develop have a few design principles. First, they have to be fun. Second, we have to be able to measure them with EEG, motion capture, heart rate monitors, eye trackers, whatever. Third, they have to have an effect on how we interact with each other. They have to influence our creativity, our attention, our memory, our emotions. And finally, they have to work outside of our labs. I have two examples. Here's the first one. Grid game is our test bed and tool to influence group creativity. It starts with a very simple set of rules. So people are just moving everyday objects like rolls of tape in a grid, taking turns. However, as we know from Twitter, constraints start to tickle our creative bones. And so eventually, well, someone gets a different idea on what to do with that roll of tape. Rhythm Battle is a tool for social bonding and for resilience to disruptions. We've analyzed this, and we've, while we've noticed that people can't help synchronizing with each other, we learned that this is actually a good thing because it makes them also like each other more. So we are not the only team working with social and emotional learning in schools, but we are the most fun. So if you want to partner with us to get these gigs to more schools, then join us and let's dance. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tommy. So we've had everyone from Supercell on the gaming side to now gigs here. So now to the jury to ask some further questions. So I, I, I'm really excited about what, what you just um, <laughs> said. Uh, I'm, I'm just flabbergasted uh, because this is a science pitching competition. What is the department that you're coming from? <laughs> I'm at the Department of Neuroscience and Biomedical Engineering. So I'm one of the cognitive neuroscientists in the team. Right. And yet you're talking about organizational uh, science here, right? This is about how we... Yeah, so uh, what, social... What, what is this really? So social neuroscience, we are looking at the mechanisms that help us interact with each other, read each other's brains, learn together, communicate emotions, how anxious and uh, excited we are on stage and all those kinds of things. So, and these, these are basically processes that we study them in dance, but the same mechanisms work with every, every everyday interaction. So when we are having conversations or when we are having meetings, it's the same engine. Uh, in our brain and in our mind that that's working. So, so this is what I really, really love about this. <laughs> so uh, you come Thanks. from some completely different type of uh, background, and yet you're able to think this creatively. <laughs> Thank you. Bravo. Thank you. Yay. Cool. Oh, perfect. Are, are you collecting any data on the neurological level? Yes. Um, and I love it. I'm a contemporary dancer myself, so like oh, I, cool. I do those things often. Cool. So yeah, we are we are we are using uh, we partnered with My Brain, which is a startup in Paris, and they have made us some uh, wireless EEG monitors. So we are we are measuring the brain as well, and then of course everything about behavior, uh, movements, uh, eye movements, and then of course because it's a creative thing, uh, it's very important to also ask participants how they felt. So this kind of first person experience uh, is, is a very important part of our data set. Perfect. So let's give a big round of applause for Tommy. Thank you very Thank much. You.